super cool and powerful vehicles in sci-fi and fantasy movies. Sci-fi and fantasy movies are often a bit too imaginative when it comes to their speculation of potential technology. In the crosswinds between glimpses of the future and spooky moments, we have also seen some fascinating vehicles that have left audiences stunned with their powers and capabilities. In fact, many such sci-fi or superhero flicks are actually centered around these mechanical beasts of burden. When it comes to their abilities and designs, creators have been fairly creative. From traveling across time to flying through the air, they have accomplished all that is unthinkable. In this video, we have put together a list of such super cool vehicles in popular movies that will delight all car lovers out there. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Care for a spin? The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Nautilus Car The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is premised in an alternate Victorian age where a maniac warlord known as the Phantom threatens the world. In order to thwart this unstoppable menace, Alan Quartermain, a renowned adventurer, gathers a team of literary icons to embark upon a secret mission to stop the Phantom for good. The movie is based on a comic book series by Alan Moore, and many people didn't appreciate the changes that were made to the storyline. That being said, though the plot is somewhat impractical and unrealistic, it What are you? I'm complicated. It does give you a chance to appreciate the brilliance of Sean Connery, who delayed his retirement to be a part of it. One thing you cannot miss about the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is the jaw-dropping submarine that is created and helmed by Captain Nemo. Behold, Nautilus. The Called the Nautilus, Nemo used it to explore the oceans and even sink warships in his battle against imperialism. The Nautilus shown in the movie bears little resemblance to the comic book version, but nonetheless it is a silver-colored blade-shaped machine. The first instance of the Nautilus can be traced back to Jules Verne's famous novel 2,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and ever since then, several modifications have been made in the design of this formidable watercraft. Ford Crown Victoria, Men in Black, 1997 the private agency named Men in Black is tasked with surveillance of extraterrestrial interactions on Earth. One of the finest agents of the agency, Agent K, recruits J. Medwards, an officer of the NYPD who is renamed J. NYPD means I will knock your punk ass down. When an alien bug crash lands on the planet with the intention of seeking a super energy source, K and J must work together to stop the bug before it's too late. I don't like the neighborhood anymore. Yeah. Just some of the uh, new arrivals. What new arrivals? Have anything to do with the crasher from last night? The legacy of the Men in Black movie speaks for itself. It even won an Oscar in the Best Makeup category, and we were entertained by some terrific chemistry between Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. This fast-paced film is one of the best sci-fi comedies ever, and the makeup effects live up to the standard. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. Was that your auntie? We also cannot get over the cool vehicle driven by Kay at the time he recruits Jay. This car is a 1987 Ford LTD Crown Victoria and is a sight to behold. It's a modified version that is being used as a standard issue vehicle by MIB. The car can reconfigure to display the twin rear exhaust thrusters, giving it insanely high speeds. In fact, the vehicle can even defy gravity, and in one scene you see it right along the roof of a tunnel to avoid traffic. You know, you're much too tense. You're a young man. You need to relax. Learn to take some joy in your work. Do you like music? If only such automobiles existed in real life. Yeah, we're about to hit three feet of reinforced concrete wall. I'll abort if you say you can't do it. Knight Rider. Kit. Knight Rider is a popular name among car enthusiasts. It tells the story of an undercover cop who is wounded during one of his missions. He is nursed back to health and made into a new man, Michael Knight. 
To help him fight crime, he's provided with equipment and a virtually indestructible supercar, Kit. In actuality, this vehicle is probably the most expensive car in the world. Come on, this is my car. A high-performance vehicle filled with artificial intelligence. I said, out! Why didn't you warn me? You told me to keep quiet. Who's he talking to? Nobody, this boy's a hard car. It is fairly obvious that be it the TV series or the feature film, Kit takes the center stage in this storyline. A black Pontiac Firebird Trans Am T-Top automobile. Kit is mainly programmed to protect Michael, or any human life for that matter. There are tons of features that can be activated by the mere press of a button on the panels. The best part about it is the self-aware cybernetic logic module that allows it to have a mind of its own. It would obey all orders bar violating its prime principle of protecting human life. The car is immune to any form of explosives or firearms, and only heavy artillery or rockets can do some damage. The turbo boost is another amazing feature. There are several other gadgets, such as the electronic jamming system, that allows Kit to take control of electronic machines in the vicinity. Michael, I've completed the analysis on that rifle. Fire away, pal. It was discharged yesterday, and I scanned traces of paper wanting in the back. It is also armed with a wide variety of weapons and defense systems to repel rockets. Overall, it is almost a superhero in itself, and it is no surprise that the Knight Rider brand got such a big thumbs up from the fans. Mach 5 – Speed Racer 2008 Speed Racer is one of the youngest racers out there who dreams of being the champion of the racing world. He aspires to win the Crucible, a cross-country event where his elder brother lost his life. The races are being fixed, and Speed realizes that there are mountainous hurdles to pass before tasting victory. However, on his side, he has the genius designing of his father who made the Mach 5. Sounds beefy, Pops. Yeah, I'd give it a little something extra. With his family business on the wire, he must win the race against all odds with this super-fast vehicle. Speed Racer captures the true essence of a family in a real crisis and is a largely misunderstood movie by Lana and Lily Wachowski. The effects are phenomenal, and if you don't mind the cheesiness of the narrative, this will come across as a good, wonderful family drama. The racing bits were almost too good to be true and came up with a delightfully realistic SFX that amped up the sound of the race cars. The acting performances are not the best, but the real hero is the Mach 5, the automotive machine that can be the unchallenged winner on a racing circuit. This two-seater car can reach speeds in excess of 250 miles per hour, and the open roof design makes it eye-catching as well. On top of this, you will find some features that almost make this car invincible on a racetrack. For instance, the auto jacks help it jump up instantly, special grip belt tires allow traction over any harsh terrain, and the cutter blades help in sawing through obstacles. It is also a fortress thanks to the deflector control, which makes the cockpit bulletproof, crashproof, and watertight. The Mach 5 alone makes this movie a must-watch for all the car enthusiasts out there. Ghost Rider's Bike – Hell Cycle We're all familiar with a Ghost Rider narrative in both the comics and the movie starring Nicolas Cage. Johnny Blaze sold his soul to Mephisto many years ago to save the life of his father, turning him into a bounty hunter who rides every night to claim sinful individuals for the devil. If you go by Marvel lore, the Hell Cycle was made by Mephisto to serve the spirit of vengeance. It is seen as the most common vehicle used by the Ghost Riders and does not obey the laws of physics. It is powered by Hellfire, and this allows it to reach breakneck speeds. From riding over water bodies to flying in the air, there is little that the Hell Cycle can cannot accomplish. It is loyal to the Ghost Rider, and even when he isn't riding it, the Hell Cycle will obey his orders. For the movie, an actual bike was made, a custom-built chopper that one can barely steer. Over 11 feet in length and weighing just above 500 pounds, it would be almost impossible for one person to ride it without assistance. But seldom have we seen something cooler being fashioned by the designers. That's what I'm talking about!
Light Cycle, fifth generation, Tron Legacy. Long after the success of Tron, a sequel was made titled Tron Legacy, and it marked the directional debut for Joseph Kaczynski. The story traces the journey of Sam, the son of Kevin Flynn, as he tries to resolve the mystery of his father's disappearance. This takes him to the digital world where he must face unspeakable dangers to get to his father. Will he find him? Can he bring him back to the real world? Well, watch the movie to find out! The fifth generation light cycle is an updated version of what you've seen before. It looks more like a real-world motorcycle and even comes with headlights to make the program effective in dark environments. Unlike previous generations, this version has similar-sized front and rear wheels. It is fast as lightning courtesy of its liquid energy-infused mechanism. If the front or back wheels are pushed further apart, the speed can even be increased. Besides the real-world design of the light cycle, the makers even added realistic problems associated with the impact of a direct collision. which can cause sustained injuries in the rider. Daniel Simon deserves all the praise for his remarkable design in the movie, and this fifth-generation light cycle was loved by the fans of Tron for its swashbuckling nature. The Wraith's Car The Wraith Packard Walsh is the leader of a ruthless motorized gang that terrorizes a quiet desert town in Arizona. They challenge drivers to participate in drag races and win over their vehicles. The first one, the Dragon Fire Crossing wins! You lose the race! You lose your car! Walsh has a thing for one of the girls in town and stabs her boyfriend to death for being intimate with her. Soon, a charming and mysterious character named Jake arrives in his cool bike and invisible car. The spirit of the dead boyfriend has descended through him, and he methodically starts eliminating members of the gang who were responsible for his death. Can he get to Packard Walsh, something that even the sheriff failed to do? If you're putting us under arrest, I do believe we have right to counsel. This movie is pure 80s fun and nostalgia that will bring you sheer joy courtesy of its ridiculous story. Most of the movie is cheesier than a double cheeseburst pizza, but the super cool vehicle makes it worth your time. The compulsive 80s soundtrack also happens to be a great addition to the film, and over the years, Wraith has attained a cult status among viewers. More often than not, the majestic and magical vehicles that you observe in movies are make-believe. Skink, why is it you continue to question my authority? However, the Wraith featured a Dodge M4S, which is considered to be a highly sophisticated automobile. It was powered by a Chrysler 2.2-liter four-cylinder engine and could reach speeds of over 194 miles per hour. It took over $1.1 million to get the car together, and the makers used it for some breathtaking stunts. In fact, one such stunt involving a chase sequence on a mountainside caused an accident, resulting in the tragic death of a crew member. Overall, Wraith has some of the best car chase scenes that you will ever find. The Black Beauty, The Green Hornet Britt Reed inherits the highly successful company owned by his father after the latter passes away. Having previously been a carefree playboy, Britt decides to team up with his father's assistant Kato and become a masked vigilante called the Green Hornet. The two initially fight staged crime all over the city for fun. However, things turn into a hard reality when a notorious kingpin and the police start to pursue them. Understanding this is not a game anymore, Britt must come to terms with these changes as fast as possible. There have been several attempts to recreate the magic of the Green Hornet, including a radio podcast and TV series. As for the film, if you judge this as a superhero movie, The Green Hornet fails miserably. However, if you try it out as a parody meant for entertaining the audience, you will have loads of fun.
The situations and characters are hilarious, and you wouldn't mind the campy nature of the narrative. There is also a fascinating car named Black Beauty that lifts the visual quotient of the movie. This car is driven by Brit's chauffeur and assistant, Kato. The movie version shows that the car is armed with M1919 machine guns mounted to the hood. It also has a flamethrower and stinger missiles alongside the M220 gauge shotguns. Besides such serious weaponry, the car also features retractable front wheels, anti-riot spikes, and door guns to defend against enemies. You could take it to Omaha Beach and win against the Germans in World War II, let alone defeat the villain in an action movie. Batflex Batmobile – Batman vs Superman – Dawn of Justice The world starts to think that the alien-like superpowers of Superman are not required for the Earth. Even Bruce Wayne believes that if his actions are left unchecked, Superman can turn into a menace to society. Conversely, Superman feels that Batman is the reckless one and the two clash in a battle of equals. So what happens when an unstoppable force meets with an immovable object? This is probably one of the most underappreciated superhero flicks of our time. Even with a gripping plot, Ben Affleck's unparalleled performance and some stunning fights between the Man of Steel and Batman, the movie couldn't satisfy many fans. The reason we bring this name to this list is also because of the customized, versatile mode of transport used by Bruce Wayne when he fights as Batman. The Batmobile has often been his biggest support in the worst combat situations, and this time it is no exception. The vehicle was built by Wayne Enterprises for the military, but the latter rejected it for being too expensive. Bruce modifies the tank to his requirement, and it has everything from speed to precision. Armed to the teeth with high-tech missiles and guns, this monstrosity is the equivalent of an entire army. The Batmobile also comes with its set of defense mechanisms that help Bruce protect himself from an attack. The Batmobile is supreme enough to have a video of its own, and it is probably one of the pillars of strength that Batman thrives on. Keep it steady! There's no place to go! Look out for the crash! Kirby! Kirby's on the fence! Kirby's on the fence! Herbie from Herbie Fully Loaded, 2005. A Volkswagen Beetle has its own consciousness, but was chucked away to a junkyard after a few losses in important races. This car, called Herbie, is found by Maggie Payton, who belongs to a family with a great racing history. Maggie has plans to join ESPN News because her father has forbidden her from racing, but Herbie seems to have other plans too. Soon, Maggie and Herbie become potential NASCAR competitors, although victory awaits them after some very tough complexities along the way. This is an adorable movie that is fun to watch as long as you do not take things too seriously. The 1963 Volkswagen Beetle is pretty cool, and Disney picks one of the most tried and tested storylines for a box office hit. But even if you are disappointed, the delightful Herbie will win your heart. The soothing white body paint gives it an innocent look that is well contrasted with his playful, mischievous ways. He is childish yet ambitious and has a caring attitude towards his owner. If treated the right way, Herbie would go all out to win races, but he isn't too kind to people who are rude to him and rub his ego the wrong way. Herbie can drive on his own because he has a mind of his own, and his presence lifted the movie up big time. Aston Martin DB5 – James Bond's Car if we started speaking about the spectacular cars in the James Bond franchise, it would probably be a series of videos in itself. The enigmatic secret agent is known for his long-standing love for stylish cars that can do freakish stuff to get the better of his enemy. One of the most versatile vehicles in Bond's collection has been the Aston Martin DB5, and it has appeared in multiple movies like Goldfinger, Goldeneye, Tomorrow Never Dies, and Skyfall. This car was a serious upgrade from the previous DB4 used by 007. 
For one, the engines were enlarged from 3.7 liters to 4 liters, and the new 5-speed transmission allowed for some sleek movements. The car is a beauty, and its graceful design warrants a second glance. There have been constant modifications to suit it to the requirements of the mission, from revolving number plates, to seats that can eject in an emergency, to guns that can distract the enemy to give the spy a chance to get away. We can never forget those iconic moments where the car chase sequences would involve the majestic Aston Martin DB5. Some designs never get old, and as for this car, it is aged like a fine wine. M577 Armored Personal Carrier Alien. The movie Aliens by James Cameron marked a milestone in filmmaking that became the bedrock for many high-tech sci-fi movies to build on. The story is about a warrant officer named Ellen Ripley who has awakened from her hypersleep state after 57 years and tries to warn people about the threat of the aliens that she faced before. To make matters worse, the alien creatures have taken over a space colony, and now Ripley must assist a team of colonial marines to fight these unforgiving space bugs. Can she help put an end to this absolute nightmare? <laughs> this movie serves as a sequel to the 1979 film titled Alien and is hailed as a masterpiece for its impeccable storytelling. The characters have a touch of humanity, and the deadly battle that ensues will take your breath away. There are scenes that bring the creepy atmosphere on its feet, moments such as the one where the heart-pounding facehugger is on the loose steal the show. Another aspect that deserves a special mention in this movie is the M577 armored personal carrier that was used by the United States Colonial Marine Corps. You can imagine this to be more of a fast-moving tank as it can fit several soldiers inside it. It is capable of hitting speeds of 50 miles per hour and is pretty deadly with top-mounted twin cannons. We loved it when the M577 APC ran over xenomorphs and how it glided over all kinds of terrain without any trouble. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe!